You're listening to the QuickBook Reviews podcast. Brighten your day with a book. Hello, my fellow bookworms. This is Philippa from QuickBook Reviews, author interviews and book reviews. This is a Christmas special. It's so exciting. And for the fourth year running, I'm joined by Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Lauren, welcome. Welcome to me and Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas in November. I love that we record this in November. This sort of kicks off my Christmas spirit, you know. <laughs> I just had to find my Christmas playlist to play as I was just getting ready for the <laughs> day. <laughs> to, to raise morale, to yeah. raise Christmas morale. When do you put your Christmas tree up in your house? It tends to be quite late and I think we need to change that. But yeah. I am full on. I mean, I'm going out today. I've got my Christmas hoodie on and I will be wearing it after we've ended this Lovely. chat. So I'm fine to welcome Christmas in. 1st of December is definitely Christmas is here. Everyone needs to wear Christmas earrings, drink from Christmas mugs. It's happening. Tree a bit later. You're well ahead of time. (laughs) When is your tree going up? This weekend. So probably tomorrow. So we're recording this on the 17th of November. David and I think we're going to put the tree up tomorrow and then it's a weekend event. It takes a long, long time. But we've slowly been sneaking a few little Christmassy bits in. We've got the Christmas bed sheets on. Same as you, I'm in my Christmas jumper. We've been in Christmas pyjamas this week. So yeah, it's slowly, slowly little bits coming in. So, But the big Christmas explosion happens this weekend. Well, let's just look at the year so far because, you know, coming up to Mm. Christmas, you start looking at what happened the year before and what might happen next year. What sort of a year has it been for you? It's been a lovely year. It's been a lovely year in terms of reading. It's been my first year as a wife. So we got married in December last year. So that's very exciting. I've started a new Archers podcast with with some Archers friends, which is very (laughs) exciting. That's been a real highlight. That's been lovely to be able to do that. And yeah, just... It's been very nice. It sort of feels a bit calmer this year. I think maybe because of last year we were getting ready for the wedding and stuff like that. We've done quite a lot of decorating here as well. So that took up, that was a bit less calm. But yeah, it's been a really nice year. But yeah, in terms of reading, early doors, I was reading such good books. And I think I'm going to really, some years when I do my best books of the year, I really have to think, oh, okay, so that was a four star, but would it make my best books of the year? But this year, it's just been like, amazing it's what probably one of my best reading years since I started the 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 YouTube channel which is 10 years it will be in uh in May so yeah an amazing reading year what about you yeah I have had it's been a mixture I suppose I mean I've had some really great personal things that have happened you know daughters got off to university I managed to stay there so that's a thumbs up (laughs) (laughs) Son is pursuing his singing, so that's all good. The podcast, as you say, starting the All About the Archers podcast is just, that's my happy place, definitely. But for books, I've just found I haven't had enough time and I've just taken on too much with the book podcast. So from next yeah. year, I'm just going, scaling it back because it's like when I when there's a, a book club happening, I don't really get to sit and just enjoy reading that book. I'm just skim, skim, skim. Yeah. So I next year I really want to change that and there's enjoy a real fine it. line, isn't there, between having reading as a hobby and something that you love and and like you just said about a happy place and things like that, and then wanting to elevate that a little bit to making it like a podcast or in my case a YouTube channel, but then not losing that love of reading and not looking at a big pile of books and thinking, oh, I've got to read that because I'm reading it for that and I've got to do that. Sometimes you just want to be able to go to the library and pick up a book and take it home and read it. So you really, the balance of that is is difficult to achieve. But yeah, I think I'm going to scale down a little bit next year as well. So I currently do three videos a week. But I think I'm going to go down to two videos a week. But they're still like quality over quantity, yes. Philippa, is what I'm going for next year. Yes. And I know I'm so fortunate to be sent books from publishers to read and review. I know I am really fortunate. So it sounds terrible to say it. But I just feel so obliged to read those books and I don't get to read the books that I want to read. So, yes, next year, it's it's all all changed. Philip is in charge, if if that can happen. (laughs) But, Lauren, there is one particular thing that you've done this year that just stands for everything, I think, that you are. It's something that I will never forget. And it just, it's Lauren to a T. And that is... (laughs) You're wondering that. That is your million steps. Of course, I did that, yeah. 
because that you was quite the uh, the big thing. <laughs> you had it all planned. You had the structure. You yeah. were doing it, and yeah. then and yeah. you had so many steps you had to do every day, which was great. And the the number of steps were generally sort of going down and down and down. So the target that you still had to do is getting more and more and more. And if that had been me, I'd have curled into a ball and said, it's impossible. I'm never doing another step again in my life. Woe is me. Yeah. But you, you just had this positive attitude that you can do it. And you did it by the skin of oh, your well, teeth. But you, you. I mean, did it. I very much believe in myself with most things. Like I always think I can just do anything all the time. So yeah, when I set that, I never thought and when I, I set off on the back foot, didn't I? Because I think so. I wanted to do a million steps in a hundred days, which is ten thousand steps a day, which is apparently what we should be doing every day anyway. Although not so much now. They they released the news report, didn't they? Saying you only really need <laughs> yes. to do six thousand a day. <laughs> Sounds like ten thousand steps a day. That's fine. Yeah, I do have quite a sedentary lifestyle. I work in an office job. My hobbies are reading, which are sitting down. But I not for one minute did I doubt I couldn't do it. But I got so far behind in the first half. And yeah, we went on our honeymoon. That was something else I should have mentioned. So we went on our honeymoon to Norway. We did quite a lot of walking while we were in Norway. So that helped chip into it. But when the business end of it, I was still having to do 18,000 steps a day. And I would just walk up and down my corridor on an Instagram live of an evening, just so I could be sort of like talking. Sometimes there'd literally be about six people watching. <laughs> And I would just be walking up and down. Other times I'd have more people and they'd be asking questions. And we'd have a little evening chat about books and things like that as I was walking up and down the corridor. But yeah, I forgot that I'd done that this year. God, this year has been long. But I'm actually going to do that again next year. So I'm going to start it again on the 1st of January. And now I know that I can do it in my hallway of an evening. I'm going to make sure I top up at the end of every day to make sure that I've got 10,000 steps so that I'm not falling behind straight away. Thank you for reminding me that I did that. I forgot about that. It it really inspired me to be more positive, be more Lauren. I think we could all do with with that. And for those oh, people that haven't thing. watched your YouTube channel, if there is somebody who hasn't, I really <laughs> commend it because yeah, you it, it's the joy that you give us, and I think that's what makes your videos really stand out. So thank you for that. Oh, that's very, very nice. Thank you so much. And thank you for honestly the the podcast like. Quick book reviews. I've absolutely loved listening this year. Like a couple of times, there's been some real moments. Like I remember listening to you talking about Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. And that day I was going to a bookshop and I literally listened to you discussing the book, thought, I need this book, bought it that day and started reading it that night. And I wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been for like that episode. You just, I was so excited. And that, that was one of my favorite books of the year, like Early Doors. And yeah, I've, I've loved listening to it and then getting involved with the All About the Archers podcast as well. Like, you're amazing at what you do. Well done. Well done. You, a Merry Christmas. Round of applause for you. We're just having, sorry, everyone. We're just having this loving. But anyway. It's just okay. a Christmas loving. Yes. What are your plans for Christmas is my next question. What have you got lined up? We're hosting on Boxing Day, actually. So that's, uh, that's new. Well, we did that. I think we did it the Christmas before lockdown. We hosted on Boxing Day. We'd never be able to have, we'd never be able to cook a roast dinner here. We haven't got the the, the oven space for that. So buffet boxing day works out quite well. So we've got my family around on boxing day and we're at David's family's on Christmas day. But yeah, so that's the sort of plans. I'm off work in between Christmas and new year, which is nice because it means you get a bit of downtime and I like sort of a day just sat on the sofa reading and playing with new toys and things like that. So yeah, we've got quite a busy December going up. David and I are in a choir and we've got quite a lot of choir performances and I'll be doing Vlogmas, which is a video every day in December. So yeah, it's going to be a busy December, but as always, very much looking forward to it. How are you celebrating Christmas? Yes, so we host on Christmas Day. I've got quite a small yeah. family, so we host on Christmas Day, but I don't have the level of permission to cook a turkey. I, I don't have that authority. So my mother cooks the turkey at her house and then brings okay. it round on a tray. Brings it along. Yes. I see. I have permission for vegetables and puddings, which is fine. Potatoes? I'm, yes. My husband yeah. does the potatoes because I am a bit, okay. I get far too stressed in the kitchen. But yeah, so basically, <laughs> just I'm not the chef in the family. But I will, yes, we'll be doing crackers and games and present opening and oh just lovely nice. lovely happy times but will you be a bit worried you've got new carpet now Lauren you're doing a buffet with family on boxing day are you going to be out with a monitor with a whistle and a clipboard so 
every meal since we've got the carpets, David and I have sat at the dinner table. Normally we are slobs on the sofa watching Richard Osman's House of Games and we've been sitting at the dinner table so nothing gets eaten now without sitting at the dinner table so yes there'll be a buffet which will be in the kitchen and then you'll be sitting down and (laughs) eating it and not getting anything on the carpet we'll have a new sofa by that point as well we've got a new sofa coming next weekend so yeah there'll be nothing being eaten on the sofa as well so quite a strict Christmas on here around here on Boxing Day I imagine Will there Loads be a rotor? Fun. Will there be a rotor for the table so people can sit down and eat on that? <laughs> there's enough space for us to all sit around the table. So we've got quite a big table. So there'll be seven of us. So there's enough space for everyone. But yeah, there'll be no getting up and unless you finish your plate. <laughs> and if you want to eat a mince pie, you can eat it over the sink. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I like this structure and organisation. I've become my mother. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But this has actually happened. The wow. number of times I think now I am literally turning into my mother. Yes, I think that just happens. I feel sorry for my daughter. It's just hit me all of a sudden. Mind. I wasn't expecting it, but it's just happened. Are you going to be like my grandmother? Have like these plastic things covering the sofa yeah, when anyone I those. I remember those, yeah. Get your cling film out, Maybe. Lauren. My next question is about not only your favourite day over Christmas, because for some people it isn't actually Christmas Day, but also what your favourite sort of hour of that day is. What What is That's the... That's a lovely question. The top. David and I often have a little... We tell a few little porky pies in between Christmas and New Year because we we'll say to one set of family, oh, no, we can't do that, we're doing this, or we can't, we're meeting up with friends, or we're doing that, and then we just have a day of of nothing. And this started when we first got together, when we first moved in with each other, um, and we were being sort of pulled about can you come and do this can you come and do this and we were like no 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 we can't we're doing this that day so that sort of stayed I mean they're well aware of what happens now so we're just like we just want a day so that normally falls around sort of 27th 28th once Christmas has happened and yeah that's just a sort of sitting on the sofa in your pajamas day I'll look at all my new books I normally get a cookbook or something so maybe I'll think about cooking something out there eating a lot of leftovers which is lovely Back in the day, David used to get a lot of Blu-rays and stuff. Obviously, that's less happening nowadays, but we would maybe sit and read that, watch that or play a board game. So those sort of like quieter times are my sort of special moments and just having that, especially after Christmas and Boxing Day have been quite mad to then just have those moments with David and like maybe have a bath with a new bath bomb and and stuff like that. So yeah, I love Christmas and uh, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. But yeah, I think it's the, the quieter times are my my favourite time. So maybe just coming into the lounge on the 27th and thinking, oh, I've got a lovely big pile of books just to look through. And so maybe that sort of hour, maybe eight until nine on the 27th of December, where I'm in a nice pair of pyjamas and I've got a cup of tea and there's a little bit of leftovers for breakfast and I'm looking at my big pile of books. Yeah, that's my that's my happy time. Gosh, that's wonderful. So we'll think of you on the 27th. What about you? I, I want think... to know your favourite hour. <laughs> I think Christmas Day is probably my favourite day. I'm such a child. I love it. But I, you always worried, oh, will someone like this present? Will this go well? Will people get on? All of that. So I think my favourite hour, it, this sounds terrible. <laughs> my favourite hour is when everyone's gone home. I'm in my pyjamas. Yeah, no, I'm sitting down well. and I'm having cold Brussels sprouts, chestnut stuffing and gravy. I'm in heaven with that. Lovely. Yeah, And just sitting there on the sofa, happy memories of what's happened in the day, but it's done. Yeah. And it's just that, yeah, I think that's my my favourite hour. So about six o'clock. That's got Marks and Spencer's Christmas advert vibes that has. You just sort of <laughs> sat at the end of the day thinking it's done. Pass the leftovers. Yes. And like you, I like quiet time because life is so busy. So once Christmas Day is done, I like a bit of time of doing as little as possible. Board games, eating chocolate, reading books, having a lovely time. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. (laughs) And I do also have to ask, are you asking for any books? for Christmas are there any books in particular I'm interested in your take on this as well because as two people who have a lot to do with books throughout the year and you mentioned earlier about getting sent books from publishers and and I use the library a lot as well so a lot of people are always a bit worried to buy me books in case they're doubling up and stuff like that so I give a sort of very small list of 
a few things. So I have asked for a few books. One of the books I've asked, David and I have got quite into listening to classical music this year. And that's partly because when we went on our mini moon last year, where we stayed, they had classic FM on. And it was just so lovely to have that on just in the background all the time. So that's something we've done this year, listen to classic FM. It's basically always on in the background. But I'd really like to get to the point where I'm familiar with pieces of music or I can look at a composer and think, oh, yeah, I'd like something, but oh, that's by that person and stuff like that, because we're not at that point at the moment. And there's a book called A Year of Wonder. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've um, got it. And it's about a different... Oh, have you? So it's about a different piece of classical music every day to listen to. And yeah, I'm very... So I I, I put that's on my Christmas list. So that... And I'm I'm really looking forward to getting that. And that's nice because I love a book that sort of gives all year round as well. So that is something that will give all year round. So yeah, I give a very small... A small amount of books. Now, David's mum always gets me a lovely, lovely pile of books and she goes to do, she quite enjoys it. I think she goes to Waterstones and she says she does her book haul and buys me lots of books. And occasionally there's some overlap, but she always gives me the receipt so I can take it back and, and change it and then maybe get something in the sale as well, which is nice. So I do get books and I always ask my sister for a vegetarian cookbook. I never say, oh, get me this vegetarian cookbook because I quite like to see what I might end up with. So that's always something I end up getting as well. And like I said, I love getting cookbooks for Christmas. So do you get do you get books for Christmas or are people nervous to buy them for you? Yes, I'm exactly the same in that people are nervous to buy me a book, but also they have this very strange philosophy that they think, I mean, prepare yourself for this, Lauren. They think I've I know got enough say. books. I'm just like, that's not no. true. It's not at all. I want to be sitting That's there on the evening of Christmas Day looking at the books that I've received and being very happy. So, yeah. yeah there's but no I think such I'm, thing as too many books. Exactly. So I'm going to have to specify. I think there won't be anything on my Christmas list except books. That'll just force them yeah. into getting me some books. But there's like the Nigel Slater Christmas Chronicles that you ha- that, yeah. that you refer to. And it looks wonderful, but that's quite a bit of money. So I thought I'll ask for that for Christmas and then I'll have it. It's a every... lovely gift. It's a lovely, lovely gift. Yeah. And it keeps giving. And you could even, there's even a little bit that you can read because it's done in like diary excerpts. It goes until February. So you could even like just do that end of it once you've got it for Christmas and then pick it up again in November when it starts again. But yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely gift to get. And even just to browse that and look at the photography and stuff, that'll be a nice thing to do. That's a great mm. idea for a gift. Fabulous. Talking about books, every year mm. for the last yeah, fourth time, we have got five books Four each. Years. Yes. We've got five books each that so we excited. have selected and we haven't conferred. We don't I have an idea, I think, of some of the books that you're going to talk about, but we will I have an idea of a book that you uh, two books that you might have as well. So yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll see how we get on. What I should say at the beginning is normally I spend November reading Christmas books so that when I come to this discussion, I have books that I would actually recommend that I've read. And that works really well because I can recommend and endorse them. But then in December, the last thing on this earth that I want to then see is a Christmas book, which is quite a shame. So I've changed it this year. I'm going for books that I think will be really good but I haven't read them yet and I'm going to just enjoy reading them in December. You're going to do the Christmas December read and that's what happens for me. 1st of December, we're straight on to Christmas books. One thing that has happened this year though, before we get on to our five books each, is that I've put a lot of reservations on at the library for different Christmas books and I went to pick up two Christmas books. So there's a Hercule Poirot Silent Night book and Midnight at the Christmas Library, I think by Jenny Colgan. Went to pick them up. They're on two week back loans because they're brand new books i've got to get them back by the 28th of november i'm not going to get those read am i oh what a shame i know because i don't start the christmas reading until the first of december so those two that will be going by the wayside maybe i'll get them on audiobook who knows two weeks is a very short amount of time but i understand very short amount of time especially for like people who read a lot as well so i can't even imagine how people who don't read as vicariously as i do to be able to get that to get it done in two weeks. They're big books as well. So. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But the, on to the books, on to the Christmas books. On to the book. Right. Let's have your first. I'm really excited. Let's have your first book. I'm really excited. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so my first book I've gone for is Love Light Farms by BK Borison. Ooh. So I run a, a Patreon page where we do a Christmas book club. The, it runs every month, but it started as a Christmas book club. And there was two books up for the vote this, this Christmas. And this was the one that didn't win. So this is Love Light Farms by BK Borison. But so many people, I already, I'd always planned to read this, but so many people tell me that this is a bit steamy and I thought oh steamy Christmas don't mind if I do but yeah it sounds very Hallmark so it's about Stella she wants to save the Christmas tree farm that she lives on and she enters a contest with an insta famous influencer called Evelyn St James there's publicity with the cash prize she really hopes she wants to be able to save the Christmas tree farm but she lied on the application form to say that she had a boyfriend that she ran the farm with and she doesn't have a boyfriend so they're coming to visit she needs to find herself a fake boyfriend to run the farm with and there we go so there we go I'm not much of a romance reader apart from at Christmas so Love Like Farms BK Borison potentially steamy Christmas tree farm we'll see how it goes <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I like the sound of that one. My first yeah. one, there is an author who I interviewed last year called Alexandra Benedict, and she writes Christmas books, Christmas sort of murder mystery books. And yeah. her book this year is The Christmas Jigsaw Murders. So this is her new one. It's just out. It's Christmassy. It's got jigsaw puzzles in. There's a murder. I'm so... It's ticking all the boxes. <laughs> I'm so ready for this book. And the trouble is some books, because I love crime books generally, not true crime, obviously fictional crime, and I love crime books, but when they're done at Christmas, in years past, sometimes they've not quite hit the mark. They've been a bit, I don't know, just a bit weak and haven't wishy -washy really... Wishy-washy almost. Yes, yeah. wishy-washy. Whereas when I read Alexandra's book last year about a tra murder on a train, was or it called like the Christmas Express or something? Yes. Murder on the Christmas Express yes, or something? That's yeah, exactly I remember what... seeing it in foils. Yeah, and so I just thought this one about jigsaw. There's, it's just going to be superb. And I really remember interviewing Alexandra, and she really was very honest. And I just really enjoyed our conversation. I haven't forgotten that. So I thought, yes. I'm ready for and the that's Christmas out now, is it? Ready this to is go out now. Ready to go. People can get hold of this immediately. So that's my book. Oh, that one. might be going on my list. I think that's going on my list. Right, book <laughs> two is one I think you might have, and it's and so this is Christmas by Brian Bilston. Fifty-one <laughs> seasonally adjusted poems. So did you have that one lined up? I did, but look, I only got sent a little leaflet. You got sent the whole book. I've got the leaflet as well, but I then followed up and said, oh, when there's a finished copy of that, I will have it. So yeah, so I've heard you interview Brian Bilston before and I'm very excited about it. So I have a bit of an unusual relationship, unusual, I guess a bit hot and cold relationship with poetry. Like some of it I really love. One of my favourite books from last year was Slug by Holly McNish, which was a whole collection of poetry. Um, and yeah, I have to really, really like it. But when I got the little slip, as you did earlier, as you've shown, I read some of them and I was like, oh, I really like that. And I think it's because Christmas is such a familiar thing for me. And a lot of the book, a lot of the poems were like poems that already existed, maybe with a Christmas bit slipped in. And it just felt like really good fun. One of the ones I really liked, because it's all a bit different, is there's one that's called Christmas in Excelsior. It's an Excel spreadsheet with different oh, yes. Christmas words in it. So it's called Gloria in Excel Spreadsheet. There's some real fun things done with like layout. There's a Christmas, there's a poem set in the shape of a Christmas tree. I think it's going to be really, really good fun. And I'm looking forward to sort of like dipping in and out of it throughout December. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Speaking of poetry, have you ever come across books called The Poetry Pharmacy? No, but I recently watched a video from Lena Norms and that was in her Christmas gift guide. So it's sort of like if you're feeling a bit melancholy or if you're feeling lonely, you can refer to a poem in that book. Yeah, it sounds like such a lovely idea. Yes, it's my favourite. There's three books now in the series. They are my favourite. So you don't have to sit there and read the book cover to cover. It's just when you're feeling a particular emotion or feeling, you can look it up and there's a poem. And I don't know how they choose the poems. That's another great gift. This doubles up as a gift guide, guys. <laughs> so my next one is this. Oh, which I, I own that too, but that's not on my pile. But yeah, I own that too. It's lovely. <laughs> so this is called The Classic Christmas Crime Stories and it's part of the Macmillan Collector's Library. So it's a lovely 
little book. It's a bit like the one that we read, Lark Rise to Candleford. So it's a yes. beautiful blue cover. It's got a lovely blue ribbon. It's not that long. How many pages is it? 300, but they're quite small. So I think you could you could zip through it. And it's just a collection of lovely Christmas stories. You've got one from Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson. And I just think it's one that you just sit down on Christmas Eve and you just feel very, oh, yeah. I'm very Christmassy sitting here reading my, my book. So, yes. Those but, lovely, cute little, I, I felt it when we were reading Lark Rise to Candleford, but I felt like I was in like an Austin novel or something because yes. the books are as big as your hand. So you're literally like holding it. So they're perfect to read in the bath or have in your handbag and stuff like that. They're just there. Yeah. And yeah, I completely get that. You could pull that out on Christmas Eve um, whilst you're having a nice glass of something spiced and just uh, have a little read of it. But yeah, it's a lovely little thing. And those Macmillan Collectors uh, uh, libraries are just gorgeous, aren't mm. they? Yeah, I think it's They're wonderful. So, nice. so yes, very excited about reading that one. What's your next book? So as I earlier mentioned, I run a Patreon book club but uh, over Christmas and the book that won the, the vote because Love Light Farms didn't was The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. This was obviously going to come up. So The Appeal um, is a book that I read. Oh, you've got it ready there as well. Your cover looks different to mine. Lovely. I read The Appeal a couple of years ago. It was one of my favourite books of the year. David read it in a weekend, which is absolutely unheard of that he would read that in a weekend. He's not a big reader like I am, but he was so into it. And then when I heard last year that this was being done this year, I was like, that is going to be amazing. So The Appeal was a sort of murder mystery book told, it's a modern epistolary novel, isn't it? Told through emails and WhatsApp messages and text messages and parish council minutes and things like that. And this is sort of an extension of that. So I am told you can read this as a standalone. You don't need to have read The Appeal in order to, to get from this. But yeah, there's a dead Santa. There's a panto going on. It's the same sort of vibes in terms of being told through emails and text messages and WhatsApp messages and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just a very fun sort of modern read. And it's a real slice of life into sort of village life. It's very, very fun. And yeah, interesting. Like I cannot wait. I really, really hope I love this because I loved the appeal. I didn't really like the Twyford Code. I didn't even finish Alperton Angels. So hopefully we're going back here and this could potentially be one of my faves of the year because I just based on how much I love the appeal and this is the appeal we've added Christmas I mean surely have you read this I haven't read it yet I'm interviewing Janice next week about this book so I'm Lovely. really looking forward to that and yeah as somebody who takes part in village pantomimes and the highs yes. and lows of that I cannot wait to read this book and it's quite a short one as well is it quite a sh 190 yeah. pages it's just under 200 pages yeah Oh, very, very yeah, good. Yeah, very excited. Super. That's your third book? Yeah, that's my third that's one. That's your third book. Yes, great. So my third one is The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. I don't know if you've heard of this one. I have. I was told I was being sent a copy and it hasn't arrived yet. So you've just reminded me, actually. Maybe I'll get onto them and say you'll send it through to me. Because, yeah, I think I might have. I think maybe did you put this on your Instagram? Because I'm sure I found out about this through you. Yes, because um, I'm interviewing Peter next week maybe? about it. As well. So, yeah, I, I am aware of it. But, yeah, what's what's the plot? What's the plot? OK, so Peter Swanson is a really superb sort of crime thriller author anyway. And this is 120 pages, so it's not long. It's obviously Christmas. It's based in the Cotswolds. There's an American who's having to spend time with her friend's family and then the friend's twin brother, there's sort of romance potential, but there's strange goings on. And they say, what holiday mm. horrors await? Oh, I just think it looks lovely. I can't oh, wait to talk to Peter about yeah. it. So, yes, yeah, very, very that nice great. read. That's a little slim one as well. I feel like you could easily pop this in as a stocking filler or something because potentially you could get that done sort of just still over the Christmas period. Do you know, you've just made me think of something. Imagine a Christmas book stocking, just filled with books and bookish things. I know. Wouldn't that be lovely? I would love that. She wants if it. Father wants Christmas it. is listening to this. <laughs> please, please, can you imagine <laughs> bookish socks? What would you put in a in a bookish Christmas oh, no. stocking? Oh, we could have all sorts of things like, and a nice little treat that you might like to eat when you're reading. Some nice bookmarks. 
like you said, socks, cosy socks, maybe a bookish themed hot water bottle for warmth. And oh, all of those lovely things. Imagine cushion, little blanket, just to set up your perfect reading situation. You'd need quite a big stocking to fit all of those in, I suppose. Jamming would, a cushion yeah, in a would. stocking. Yeah. But I, I'd happily yeah. benefit from that. I wouldn't have a problem yeah, with nice. that at all. What's your next book then? Book number four. Okay. So my book number four is um, the, the last in a series. So it's All Changed by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Um, this is the fifth book in the Cazalet Chronicles. So David's mum actually bought me the two books at the, the, the top of this Cazalet Chronicles, the, the Chronicle 1 and 2, for Christmas last year. So I hadn't heard of any of them. And I read the first one for Patreon Book Club, actually, in July, and then realised that this one, All Change, is set, as you can see from the front cover, there's a lovely Christmas tree there, over Christmas. So I thought, oh, if I read one a month between now and December, I can read this one, which is set over Christmas in December. So this has been a big thing that I've been building up to all year. I'm currently 200 pages away from the end of the fourth one, which I'm going to go and sit and enjoy reading for the rest of the day. But yeah, I've had a lovely, lovely, lovely year getting to know these characters, the Cazalets. I can't tell you all that much about this one because there's been a lot of stuff that's happened, but you're, you're following the Cazalet family. At the top of the family are the, the mother and father, elderly, the duchy and the brig. Um, and then they've got three sons and a daughter and you're following the son's wives and friends and people they may or may not be having affairs with, their children and people outside of the family. And it's just a real look in at this this family's life told during the Second World War. This The fifth one is about 10 years after the last. So she wrote this one much later in life. And it's sort of like everybody coming back together for a Christmas. So I'm very much looking forward to finishing. I'm looking forward to finishing the series, but also sad because I've had such a lovely time with them. But yeah, I've got lots more of this. I've got a radio play to listen to and the the BBC made an adaptation of it. So I'm going to watch that as well. But absolutely have loved that this year. So come into the fifth one of these over Christmas. I can't wait. I actually cannot wait. It's quite a chunky one as well. So I'm going to have to spend some time. I think we're going to, we're going to go away for our anniversary and I'm going to take this with me and just sit in the bath and be cosy and read. So that's the plan for that one. Oh, that is wonderful. Have you got any series planned for next year to read? Because if you finish that one, what will you embark on another one? I know. I've had such a lovely time reading that series this year and it, was, it wasn't it was planned. Like I said, I got them for Christmas last year and I sort of popped them on my shelf and thought, oh, maybe when will I get round to them? But who knows? I haven't got anything planned for definite. However, and I think you'll be excited about this, is that not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, David's mum bought me the second in the Barchester Towers series. Is it called the Barchester Towers? I know it's your favourite. Barchester Chronicles. Yeah, the Barchester, Barchester Chronicles. Chronicles. So she bought me the second. So obviously I haven't got round to that yet, but maybe I need to get my hands on the first so then I can get into that series because yeah, I know you're a big you're a big fan. I love Anthony Troll. I love that series. There's also yeah. um, a huge audiobook you can get of the dramatization of the whole series. And that oh, amazing. is so I think it's just one audio spend you have to do to get the whole oh, okay. thing. I love that. The first book in the series is called The Warden. It's quite short and it's quite, as is the case sometimes, it doesn't represent the whole series, but it's still a lovely way to get into it. And it just goes on from that. But yeah, Anthony Trollope, mwah, very, very good. Oh, that would be so oh, exciting. Great. Yeah, well, like, like, like I said, yeah, I would like to do that because I've had that book on my shelves for a long time and I've sort of, I keep thinking, oh, I must get my hands on the first one of the series so then I can read that second one. But yeah, I mean, maybe I should have put that on my Christmas list, the first one, and then I could have got started with it. But I, I have loved reading a series this year. I'd also maybe like to read the whole of the Anne of Green Gables series because I've read Anne of Green Gables a few times now. It's actually the book club book for this month, and I love it, but I've never delved further into the series, but I own them. That's that's them up there, actually. That's them there. The, so, yeah, I would love to to read those as well. Fantastic. My next book... Is, there's a theme here. It seems to be the authors that I'm interviewing <laughs> over the next few oh, weeks. Oh, there we go. But, You're obviously excited um, for them. I am really excited. Yeah. So the next one is is this book, Murder at Holly House, I Do Like Crime, by Denzel um, Merrick. Yeah. And so this one is set in 1952 in a remote village. Nice. It's Christmas. Oh. We've got snow. 
The doctor's husband is unfortunately found dead. And Inspector Frank Gros, I think it's Grosby, comes along and he has to work out who is a friend, who is a foe, who's lying, who's telling the truth. And I just I just got really good vibes about this one. And I can't wait to read it and I can't wait to interview the author. So, yeah, I've got some really fantastic weeks coming up of just reading Christmas books, interviewing authors, just chatting about Christmas. It's going to be so lovely. You've got, you're in for a right old treat. I love the look of that one. The front cover of that is amazing. It's really sort of, yeah, exciting. Very yeah. good. I think it looks like a bit of fun as well. And yes, yeah. can't wait. Can't wait. So we come to your final book now, Lauren. Tell me what yeah, is it is. Yeah, so my final book is Mistletoe Malice <sighs> by Kathleen Farrell. So this is a re published isn't it so this was published before so what actually drew me to this is that a few people said if you're a fan of the Cazalets which is where all changes then you'll love this and this is sort of like a family's Christmas and yeah it's about a family getting together for Christmas it's a glorious lost gem a darkly witty portrait of a dysfunctional post-war English family's festivities for fans of people and then including Elizabeth Jane Howard so yeah I think if I've enjoyed the Elizabeth Jane Howard series, The Cazalet Chronicles. I think I'm going to really enjoy this. I really like the front cover as well with this tree on fire. Yeah. <laughs> really. You, you, at first look, you think, oh, that's really lovely and festive. And then you're like, oh, actually, that looks quite traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved yeah. it because they said... Looking forward to it. They said, the fire is on, the sherry is poured, claws are being sharpened. And I was just like, yeah, yeah. I'm so there for that. Yeah. So, yes, that looks really so good. Yeah, it's... A family being reunited... Sounds great. Been out of print for 70 years, so it's wonderful that they've Amazing. republished it again. Great. Well, my last book is actually one that you included last year, but last year it was only available oh. as an e-book, whereas this year you can read it in yeah. paper. And broken record, again, I'm interviewing the author about this. So really oh, excited. Amazing. And the book is Make You Mind Lovely. This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley-Jones. And it just sounds brilliant. The trouble for me is some of the Christmas lighter reads, they're all a bit the same. They're all hallmark. Yeah. Just, whereas this sounded different, which is what I want and really sort of relevant. So, yes, half goes to a party. The rumours go around about her kissing her friends. So she ends up spending Christmas with his family and then meets his sister, who is irresistible and I am so here for yeah. this book if you read I, I it I had a really good time reading that last year yeah so I read that last year and really enjoyed it it's got some great representation and also it sort of unfurls quite sort of cinematically I think a lot of these sort of books set around Christmas often do because you could imagine the scenes and they're sort of like parties and her meeting somebody in a bookshop and go into an ice rink and things like that. So, yeah, I, I had a really, really fun time with that last year. And hopefully you will this year. So excited that it's out in paperback now. The paperback looks great as well. Yeah, I had a proof copy last year that I, I read and really enjoyed. So, yeah, that's lovely. Those are our books. So before we go, have you got any, apart from the reading and maybe starting the Anthony Trollope series, have you got any other plans for... 2024 is there anything that you know is going to happen so i've my lovely friend jane campbell who also has a booktube channel for my birthday she made me a little box with lots of little bookish bookish challenges in so there's sort of like i think there was eight in there and some of them are like read the book that you've had on your tbr for longest and get david to pick you a book so there's lots of little gifts in there which was my birthday present this year which is just so thoughtful and lovely i've done something similar this year with my reading challenges book and i've really loved doing that but i'm getting to the end of that now so it's so exciting to me that i've got a bookish challenge to do next year as well and like I said, quite keen to read Anthony Trollope. I'd like to think if, the, if there's another series I could maybe get into as well, because I've had a lovely time with the, the Casale Chronicles this year. But yeah, I need to have a good old sit down and think about it, if I'm being honest, because I do love to set myself some reading challenges. Well, when I saw that you'd had that gift from Jen, I suddenly thought, because that was the most amazing gift. So I was like, right, sorry, Lauren, you're you're off the Archers podcast. I'm phoning Jen so she'll come. Get Jen in. <laughs> so <laughs> thoughtful and just so wonderful. And I haven't even looked, I haven't even peeped in to see what any of the little gifts are. So to have that next year, another one of these gifts that keep giving. So yeah, a lovely, a lovely, lovely thing. So I'm really looking forward to to getting into that next year. Can't wait. We come to the final question, which obviously is mandatory on this podcast. And it is... Yep. 
biscuits. Lauren, when you are reading books, when you are preparing to record for your Lauren and the Books YouTube channel, what biscuits are being consumed? Can I give it a Christmas slant and tell you, should we have a mince pie instead of a biscuit? All right, then go on. I love a mince pie. I'm not a big fan of the ones that are pastry the whole way round. I quite like the icing topped ones or a recent development. I quite like a crumble topped mince pie. So you have like your sort of mm. base and then your mince pie on there and a little bit of crumble on the top. They're quite exciting to me. But yeah, I, I'm very into a mince pie and I sort of curb them to only this time of year. So get excited to eat them around this time and there'll be plenty of mince pie eating going on in November and December. But only at the table or over the sink? Only at the table or over the sink, yeah. Absolutely nowhere. Not, nowhere near the new sofa and uh, not on the, the new carpet. Oh, Lauren, it's just wonderful to talk to you and go through all these books. So exciting. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me again. Thanks, everyone. That's it for today. I'll be back next week with Christmas book author interviews. Very exciting. So just look after yourselves and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care now. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Quick Book Reviews podcast. That's enough books, said no one ever. See you again soon.